In July of 2016, Sheraton Johnson was living her life as a working mother to three young daughters, Amber, Courtney, and Cameron. In the midst of working her full-time job, she was dealing with a divorce with the girl's father, but it was a mutual decision and was following through in a cordial manner. Sheraton's two older daughter, Amber and Courtney, chose to live with their father while Cameron, 10, the baby of the family, stayed with their mother. Cameron was a vibrant little girl who loved attending her gymnastics classes. She had the ability to run fast, tuck her body, and do complex flips. Her family thought she was safe among her coach, friends, and security, but those feelings of safety changed with one phone call. On July 28, 2016, Cameron's grandmother drove her to the gymnastics facility for a day of balance beam practice, tumbling, and giggling with friends. As Cameron ran inside the gym, her mother was at home dealing with a torn shoulder injury. About an hour later, she received a call from an unidentified number. An app on Sheraton's phone immediately recorded any phone calls from numbers that were not saved in her phone, single-handedly being able to document all of the panic and twists in their story. The person holding Cameron hostage asked Sheraton how much money she could obtain within 30 minutes to save her. The distraught mother cried through tears explaining she didn't have much to offer, but could manage to come up with possibly $5,000. In the midst of her fear, Sheraton brainstormed the idea to call Cameron's father, Brian, on her landline phone while she stayed on the cell phone call with the kidnapper. Brian was in the middle of an important meeting with his boss and declined the call, but when she immediately called back, he knew there was an emergency. When he answered, Sheraton held the cell phone up to the landline allowing Brian to hear the cold-hearted demands. The option of muting her phone or hanging up to speak to Brian better was not considered within her panic because she didn't want to upset the caller. Unfortunately, her attempts to expose the situation only caused confusion for Cameron's dad. The kidnapper insisted for Sheraton to drive to the closest bank to withdraw every last dollar she had connected to her account. She whispered to Brian that she had to go and sprinted to her vehicle hoping it would save her daughter. Sheraton was only able to pull out a total of $140 from her bank account. After disclosing the amount she was able to retrieve, the unknown person on the phone demanded her to drive to DeSoto, Texas and walk into a particular check cashing location. She explained wanting to beg the employees at the store for help, but assumed they were in on the plan too. After sending off the money, she was required to find more cash from family members. Sheraton rushed to her ex-mother-in-law's home while Brian simultaneously made repeated efforts to call her to sort out the first confusing call before he called the police. However, she couldn't hang up with the kidnapper, so she sent all of his calls to voicemail. Sheraton arrived at the home of her ex-mother-in-law asking for any money she had due to an emergency. Once again, she couldn't explain in detail about the kidnapping. She could only hope Cameron's grandmother would pick up on her fear. Although she motioned at the phone and attempted quiet whispers, her ex-mother-in-law refused to give her any cash. She rushed back to her vehicle and continued the phone call where shockingly, the caller revealed the name of Jose Luis Cortez. He went on to explain how he wanted to stop innocent killing, ultimately a statement that sent chills down Sheraton's spine. In the midst of her panic growing, she received a text message from Brian asking her to go to their old home. She reluctantly headed that way, especially throughout the overwhelming need to locate her daughter, and parked in the driveway waiting for him to arrive. During this time, she didn't dare hang up the call with the agitated kidnapper. Minutes later, Brian came to a loud halt with his car outside of the old family home. He rushed to Sheraton's window and demanded she hang up the phone. It's fake, he told her as he grabbed the phone. And in reality, it truly was, and he knew it. As Sheraton was driving around town to withdraw money, traveling to different cities, and even visiting her ex-mother-in-law's home, Brian went to Cameron's gym to see if she was actually there. Thankfully, he located their daughter safe and sound practicing her tumbles. Cameron's alleged kidnapping was actually a part of a large issue known as a virtual or digital kidnapping hoax. These cases consist of a caller claiming to have kidnapped a loved one and demanding a lump sum of money. Most of the time, victims are originally monitored on their social media as future virtual kidnappers gather important information to use against them. In some extreme cases, the caller will use a scared, recorded voice that sounds similar to the person's loved one. The person who attempted the fake kidnapping was never caught because officials believe the call was from Mexico. 
People who followed Cameron's story have asked Sheraton why she didn't immediately call police and Brian confidently answered for her saying, she didn't know if it was real and she didn't want to test the situation. During that time, things can be so confusing. You just don't know what you would do. You don't know how you would respond, she explained.